So for PCI Express 3.0, we talked about a number of the challenges that we had. Transmit speed, eight gig of transfer per second. Um, the, the additional challenges associated with the higher speed protocols, the equalization, lots of things about PCI Express 3.0. Last thing I want to talk about is some of the issues around receiver test. Now, I mentioned in the beginning of this series that receiver test was really the new space for PCI Express and really essentially any standard that's going to go beyond 5 gigatransfers per second. If you're going that fast, you're essentially operating with a closed eye specification. What that means is your system isn't going to work unless you're able to fully equalize that signal at the end of the channel. So it presents an open eye to the receiver so that you can achieve your target bit error rate. So while the other standards we've concentrated on compliance of the transmitter, when we add a required receiver equalizer to the mix, that essentially provides us with a lot of relief because the receiver equalizer is essentially able to recover a lot of the data dependent jitter that would otherwise be part of the jitter budget that is um, ascribed to the transmitter. So we get a lot of relief by having the, the receiver in there. The challenge though becomes testing whether or not that receiver's equalizer is in fact at least as good as the reference equalizer. To do that, what we have to do is create a representative signal that essentially reflects the operation of the worst case signal that that receiver is likely to see in the real world. Now we know that that will be a closed eye signal, right? So creating a closed eye signal uh, to test the receiver against is pretty easy. The challenge though is to create a very specific type of closed eye signal such that when a um, reference receiver equalizer is applied to that signal, the eye is opened up just to a prescribed amount. And when we talk a prescribed amount, we're talking tens of millivolts, you know, maybe 25, 35 millivolts after the equalizer is applied. That's not a very open eye. That's, that's not very big. Um, so the calibration process for calibrating the BERT or the, 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 the um, signal generator that you're using to test uh, the receiver then becomes a much more involved process and there's a lot of precision that is associated with calibrating the test signal such that that receiver is being stressed with a signal that really represents what it, can, what it may see in the real world. Um, this series isn't really intended to go into a whole lot of detail about how you do that. We do have some some seminars, web seminars that we put in place to talk about receiver testing and indeed this is a big area of focus for Agilent Technologies and it's an area where we uh, believe we've made some significant uh, contributions in committee and in the specification describing some of the issues and uh, some of the concerns uh, in tech, uh, of receiver test technology and where we think uh, some of the challenges are in terms of creating this um, calibrated signal that we use for the receiver. So really when you get down to receiver testing, the issue then is, is to create the test signal. Once you've got the test signal properly calibrated, tested against the reference equalizer, then you present that signal to the receiver, you put the device into a loopback mode, the BERT then device is able to, ha has a built-in error detector that allows for um, the BERT to determine if that device is able to operate at a bit error rate of 10 to the minus 12 bits, which at 8 gigatransfers per second means that it can pretty much, it needs to run for a solid six minutes at 8 gigatransfers per second with no errors at all. And if it's able to do that, then it's achieved the target bit error rate that is required by the standard. Now there are additional things that can be done. The, the specific jitter cocktail that the PCI Express or PCI SIG uses is intended to reflect what the minimum requirements are of the receiver. But from a developer standpoint, what we tend to counsel our customers is that they should probably do a little bit more exhaustive testing to understand where the limitations are in their receiver equalizer design. For example, they may want to add different levels of jitter at different frequencies throughout the bandwidth of their PLL to ensure that they understand whether or not they have any frequency dependent limitations on the operation of the device. And there's a number of different types of tools that we can apply that stress the receiver um, in very prescribed ways to help you essentially know what the marginal limits of your receiver 
design are. And this can be very helpful to, to ensure that your design is going to be the most robust design it can be and that the customers who use your designs and your chips and your implementation are able to achieve the greatest success that they can with the PCI Express 3.0 standard.